Hey, if you guys are hearing the music, let me know, okay? Yeah. Are you hearing it? Mm-hmm. Isn't that funny? She's going to start dancing. <laughs> you can dance. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Flipping Off, a purpose-driven podcast about flipping houses and making a difference. Oh, hey, it's over? <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. I don't have any headphones on, so I can't hear what's going on. No, it's fine. I, I don't need to now. I just couldn't hear the intro music. So um, welcome to the Flipping Off podcast. Melina Boswell here, co-founder of New Wealth Advisors Club. And today, I don't even know how this is going to go, but I'm, because uh, we're already giddy and laughing and um, we, I have six Girls, plus me. So we have seven of us ladies Ooh. in the house. Yes. <laughs> and Sito. <laughs> Sito is recording us. So um, I'd like everybody to, so let me just uh, introduce each one of you. So in the house, over to my left over here, we have Miss Sandy Jaime. Hello. All right. Hey, everybody. Oh, and we have Adrian Bradley. Hey. All right. And we have Becky Cardenas. Hello. And Kevin Sito. Yep, over here. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Salazar. Hello. And Miss Tamara Page. Hi. <laughs> and Monica Barrios. What's up, everybody? All right. So for some of you, this is your first time. So actually, the only uh, ones who've never done a podcast yet is Tamara and Sandy. <laughs> so uh, I got to do one with Adrian, which was really, really cool. Uh, and then I got to also uh, do one with uh, with Tina and Becky and their husbands, which was really fun. And then Monica got the opportunity to do one with Dave before he passed, um, which was, you know, if you've never heard that podcast, you should listen to it because it's really great. And the, the there's a backstory to that uh, podcast, which was Dave... Um, was like, I don't, you know, I think you can just do Monica. Like, I know her, but I don't know her that well. And so I think you guys have a great rapport and you guys have great relationship. And, you know, I, I, I know her on a, you know, not de- as deeply as you do. And I was like, oh, okay. And then the whole podcast is Dave and Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was definitely the guest and Dave and Monica just got to have a conversation. So you never know. As we were talking today, what is the topic? What is the uh, intention uh, of the ladies uh, of NWAC coming together and having a conversation at the table? And so I said, well, what's the point that we, you know, what are we, what's the point we want to get across or why are we here? And uh, Monica said, what would you say, Monica? Tell everybody what you said. I said women in leadership. Mm -hmm. Because there's not enough of us, is there? No, No, there there isn't. isn't. Yeah. So it's true. There is not enough ladies in leadership. It's really funny. When you come to... um, when you come to the RPP, one of the things we do is we kind of lay out the the uh, tiers of leadership, if you will, uh, and you know, with you know me, and then senior investors, and then you know the coaches, and then the accountability partners. And when you see everybody up there, there is one like glaring problem, like a glaring hole, and it is ladies. There is a glaring hole and, and a miss of ladies inside leadership. And, uh, and you know, I'm used to it. I'm always the only girl. I'm, you know, so I, I, I don't know. I had boys. Yeah, I was, you know, um, my husband. And my husband was uh, very much a man's man. And, you know, and so my boys are very much men's men. And so that's really, so I guess it's, I don't know if that, I don't, I've always been a tomboy. I was just remembering watching my granddaughter, um, not wanting to, she's just now starting to want to wear dresses. And I was laughing because I said, I can remember being like right around four years old and my mom putting me in a dress and I would walk, <laughs> I would walk outside in it. And truly by the time I got to the end of the driveway, I would just take off the dress. I'm like, I didn't care. I was in my Tonys, right? Just walking. I was like, I need to go play baseball <laughs> and I can't in this dress. <laughs> These frills are making me nuts. And so I was like probably four, you know, I didn't care. Why can't I just wear underwear? I don't know. So I guess there is a bit of, uh, Dave used to say that there's like, I'm pretty dude <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he meant by that when he would say I'm dudish? What do you think? I think a lot of it has to do with courage. Mm. I think women lack a lot of courage. They like mm. to just be safe. Mm. And men are always feeling like they have to have it because they have to be the provider. Mm. Ooh, that's deep. And so true. So completely true. Uh, yeah, because there's nothing. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's Gosh, isn't that sad? It's strength. Yeah. Yeah. Different, is strength different than courage, you think? 
Yes. Yes. Mm. I think it has a lot to do with how you were raised as well. Mm-hmm. You know, um, raised by an independent mother mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. somebody that had to do it on their own. You you grow up feeling and and having to and you know it, it could be it could be on the other end as well. You know mm-hmm. where you know you you like I don't want that in my life. You know, right. but. Right. At the end of the day, I know me and my sister were two different worlds. You know, mm-hmm. she kind of needed somebody to step up and and and, and take care of her, but mm-hmm. she was more bullyish. But I grew up like like your story resonates with me so well because <laughs> I I feel that you know I I grew up a tomboy, uh-huh. and then people these days they're like, "What? You don't look like?" And I'm like, I loved <laughs> being like, and I had more guy friends yeah. and, yes. you know, that was just my world. You know, mm-hmm. it's not that I chose that for myself. I just loved what, what it meant and what they did. And, and, you know, I wasn't, you didn't, you it know, didn't mean anything didn't to you. Mean yeah. It's just moment. where you fit. It was just what I fit. Yeah. Climbing trees with them and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, 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 you know, mowing not, the lawns. Not afraid to get, you know, to get like a, a, a bruise or a scar or bloody or, you yeah. know, I just want, you know, I just want to. Just you know, be an just be an adventurer. I don't know, you know. Yeah. So I didn't understand that. Now I look back. No, as I got older, I wanted to kind of like, okay, maybe dressing up would be cute. And, right. <laughs> you know, maybe baseball caps and yeah. black jackets and you know, my name on it and you know, and, and then like, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not really cute. You know, but, you know and then you start right. getting into a different world. But mm. it's um, where I came from, it it was more. Just you know, just what 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 would be so called guy, like right. you know? Yeah. And so, so that's interesting. I, I like to hear from everybody else. So Becky, were you a you know a tomboy or were you a girly girl? Big time tomboy. Really? <laughs> oh, this is so interesting. Nothing but sports. Really? And you have two boys. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And what about you, Adrian? I was a tomboy to yeah. Interesting. Sports. Mowing lawns, climbing trees, <laughs> riding on your bike as fast as you could do down the street on the uh-huh, seat, uh-huh. and then let go. Oh, yeah. The doing best. all that kind of stuff. Best. Yeah. It's so funny. Trinity, uh, you know, my granddaughter, I know I keep on talking about her, but too bad. My podcast. So, um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But uh, she just learned how to ride a bike at the beach last weekend. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, you know, dark and she like didn't want to come in because she wanted to keep on riding. And the next morning, it's like 630 in the morning. And she's like, the, anybody who had like even their eyes open, she's like, let's go outside so I can ride my bike. <laughs> and so Kendra went out with her and Trinity didn't want to rush. She didn't want to brush her hair. She wanted to do nothing. But she put her Barbies in her basket, <laughs> had them hanging out. <laughs> she's riding down the street and her hair is like all <laughs> crazy. <laughs> She, she got to learn how to ride the bike. You know that feeling. Yeah. You know, if I can remember when you get it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. So anyway, she's a tomboy, I'd guess. Yeah. So how about you, Sandy? Take a guess. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> question. It's such girly a good girl. question. Girly girl. What do you think? No, I don't think you're a girly girl. No? No. Yeah. I, growing really? up, yeah. I would, you know, my mom has these pictures of me with trying out different outfits and posing and... So I've always, I think as I got older, I started becoming more adventurous. Oh, okay. Maybe that's, okay. And huh. yeah, so. Oh, interesting. But yeah, definitely yeah, more Because I know you girl. as a hiker. I know you, you know. Yeah, but that's not until just recently. I see. Ah, yeah. oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. So your tomboy is coming out now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah, I think I, had a good, I have a good balance, you know. I think um, we all do, clearly, because we're all yeah. awesome and beautiful. Yeah. And so, you know. But and yeah. there's a reason why we all click. Click for sure. Isn't that the truth? And what about you, Monica? Oh, come on. I know you're really girl. Skip me and just, I, I, you know, I, I, come I, on, that's a no brainer. Uh, <laughs> no, I was not a girly girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I loved riding my bike. I spent most of my time on the soccer field. Oh, um, I didn't know that about That you. was my comfort zone. Mm. And I think that was kind of like after high school, it was like that's where I got lost. Mm. I really realized that I was just an average person because I no longer had that. Mm. Hmm. Wow. Ooh. Wow. All right. You just keep on bringing it back. <laughs> just like bring it around. All right. What about you, Tina? Because um, we know we just heard tomorrow. So how about you? Yeah, not really a girly girl at all. Really? Which is crazy because I'm the oldest of five sisters. Yeah. And we, all five of us are really not girly girls. Uh, but my daughter, total opposite yeah. than me. 
dresses, you know, in the dressing room. She has to spin to see what dress she wants. She's like, are you kidding me? It's her shoe, which one clicked the most? So she was like, uh-huh. you know, but she's changing now. I noticed she's, that she's in junior high, you know, uh-huh. she won't wear dresses as much now. But I'll be like, oh my God, what do I do with this little girl? Really? <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Or like night and day, it was like uh-huh. crazy. Like, I didn't know what to do with her at the beginning. <laughs> that has to be the weirdest thing, yes. you know, um, if you have a girl who's a girl girl mm-hmm. right or very different um what about what about your daughter oh my gosh she's still to this day if an eyelash falls she cries <laughs> it's just like she's and i i could never relate with her gro- oh. when she was growing up because yeah. it's like you know what i used to say to her man up <laughs> 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 yeah it's just yeah she's just yeah so that's an interesting thing in that most of us are, um, and it's funny, Sandy, I think from you, I, I, I think that there is a certain, like if we were to identify that um, characteristic, you know, we're calling it tomboy because we're like, oh, we were tomboys. But I mean, ultimately we're, you know, we're not tomboys. We're, we are just girls who'd maybe happen to play sports, <laughs> you know, that's all it really was. And we just, maybe we were a little bit more independent thinkers and maybe independent feelers, do you think? And um, maybe there is some kind of courage that's innately in us uh, that would, that would cause us to do things like, you know, climb trees and ride bikes, taking our hands off and doing things that maybe, maybe that is something that's like innately in us. And do you think that that leads to leadership? Yeah, it can be. Yeah, because it's like take a chance, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Risk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Taking risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I feel like you're like, oh, well, I didn't really hike until, but see, that's that takes courage. I think it goes back to what Monica said, which is it does take courage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think also growing up, um, because I was a girl, or I am a girl, mm-hmm. my mom, <laughs> I am, I'm still a girl, yeah, um, my mom would always be like, don't get hurt, don't, you know, just protect oh. me, so. Yeah, I think it's because you're the oldest, you know, yeah. and the oldest is always the throwaway kid, you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we ruined the I disagree kid. with that. I think it's the youngest, right. I think the, the middle. The, the, uh, oh. Middle. <laughs> Okay. Well, I didn't have a middle. I had a, you know, I was the yeah. youngest. So yeah. I was like, youngest the, young, the, the first ones, you don't, you're like so protective over. It's and then true. the youngest ones, you're like, oh, I've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's, they're, like, they're fine. Yeah. They're totally fine. Nobody's going to die. Yeah. I, I would always come yeah. home with, you know, um, sores on my legs and everything. I never broke anything. Mm-hmm. And my parents would get so mad. Why can't you just be like a girl? Why can't you, you know? <laughs> What do you mean, be like a girl, you know? It's like, stop, you know, because I always had, but my parents didn't buy Band-Aids. I was okay with that. It's like, oh. then I run through the park and get glass in your feet. I was okay with that, yeah. you know? Wow. But yeah, they were like, they couldn't understand why, why, why would you hurt yourself? Well, didn't well, do it on purpose, but it was fun. <laughs> Raise what were you doing? Mm-hmm. And I was happy when I had my boy because I was like, you know what? <laughs> I didn't really know what boys entailed. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I knew that I was like, okay, as long as he's like me, I'm good, you know? Yeah. And so at the end of the day, it was like, I just don't want to comb no hair. Like, I, right. I you know, mm-hmm. but my ha- my son, when he was, you know, his hair got long, I had to figure that, that out. I was like, mm-hmm. hey, let me. Oh, but some that, boys can be need more primping than others, you know. <laughs> but I love, I, I love, I love the fact that you know, like I feel like I can relate more to mm-hmm. now. Now, if I had a girl, it'd be different. Not that I'm looking for any kids or anything like no. that. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm you know, it's interesting good. that I I do think that there's a lot of truth in that. I feel like if if I had um, Trinity, if she was my daughter, I, it would have been probably not great. It would be really, really tough because she's a tough girl and she's really smart and she is. Uh, you know, has this strong spirit. And so Kendra, God bless her, doesn't really know what to do with her because that's not how Kendra is at all. She needs you. She does. And so I'm thankful, you know, everything works out for, for, you know, an exact reason. And so I do find myself thinking, oh, I couldn't be who I am for Trinity right now if, you know, I was in my 20s raising her as my daughter. I just, there's no possible way I would be able to pour into her the way that I'm able to now. But let me ask you guys this question. Um, I was thinking about this. Why... Do you think, um, do you believe that we have a lack of, of ladies in leadership because uh, women are afraid? Is it because of our line of business? 
right? In other words, is it because we're real estate investors uh, or is it just women in leadership in general? It, like, what do you think that is? Do you think it's a, it's a combination or what, what, what do you think? Go ahead. Yeah. Speak. I think it's a very male dominated field mm-hmm. and it's very competitive. Mm-hmm. And I think men work best in that competitiveness mm-hmm. and women are different. You know, at least for me, I, you know, I, I'm not that competitive with others. I'm more competitive with myself and personal growth and developing that so that I can be good in any area, not just investing. Yeah, but totally. It's very well said. I think that is exactly right. What about you, Monica? What are your thoughts? I think it's just very hard to be the first woman mm-hmm. to break in. Mm-hmm. And then it's how many seats are at the table. Mm-hmm. So you Seven. could be the only woman <laughs> with all those men for quite a long time. And you're yeah. going to have to suck it up and fit in mm-hmm. because a lot of women don't have enough courage to deal with that day in and day out. Mm-hmm. And then if you leave, a lot of times women see that, okay, there's one spot open. Oh, interesting. That's Instead of all of them raising up and say, let's just join her and mm. let's just dominate it. We don't do that. Ooh, that's so good. And um, why do you think that is? Why do you think we don't do that in general? I think it's just too hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe maybe other women uh, don't want their, maybe we're, maybe the other, you know, maybe the other, the one woman at the table is, in, is insecure and feels mm-hmm. like, no, I can't have any other women, right, join me because for whatever reason, because of their own insecurities, you know. Um, I, I'll tell you that when, you know, when Dave passed, um, you know, Dave and I ran the club together. We're co-founders. I still call myself co-founder, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, which is an interesting thing, isn't it? And I think it was David who said, you know, you don't need to always say you're the co-founder. You can always say you're the founder. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm like, yeah. It's, so Dave and I had a very, uh, a, a very specific and unique relationship in that, like, we both agreed what each other's role was. And, like, nobody knows that, you know, I taught Dave how to be, be a CEO, like, if I'm being honest, that's the truth. Yeah, you could see that. Yeah, well, you could because you're a woman, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is most. And so when he passed, it was really interesting for me to watch my leadership team um, and how they related to me, you know. And so much of that, I think, and, you know, they've probably never heard me say this, so they're going to hear it for the first time if they ever listen to the podcast. Uh, but... You know, I had a couple of them immediately feel like they needed to come in and rescue me, Mm -hmm. right, when Dave died. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, uh, one of them was like, just look to me for uh, leadership. Like, okay, so what are we doing next? You know, and then another one was more like, um, you know, I'll come alongside you. You know, it's and so it's been a very interesting and and let me be honest. I'm just going to keep it really real, not politically correct, but accurate. So eat that. Uh, and that is that it has a lot to do with their cultures, how they were raised. So it kind of goes right. back to what you were saying tomorrow, you know, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's a perfectly fine thing to say, which is why I'm going to say it. I say it's not politically correct, but it's the truth. And I think the truth is totally fine, but it is okay, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and men having different cultures coming from a different background, a different culture, and not knowing anything different, right? So you guys know what you know. You know exactly what I'm saying, don't you? Yes. Yeah, and I can probably ask you who I'm talking about, and you probably know, right? Yes. Right. Am I right? Because yeah. you know my leadership team, and you know who they are, and you know how they behaved. And so, you know, there's a part of me that you know was like, oh yeah, thank you for rescuing me. Yeah. In complete transparency, that's the truth. You know, um, the other part of me is, was like. Actually, you need me to rescue you. So I don't know what you think you're doing here. (laughs) You know, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, and then the other part of me was like, um, no, I I really am, I'm going to have to do this on my own. So for me, this last year has been uh, a, a whole lot of getting stable myself and like who am I uh, first of all as a woman and, and secondly as, as a CEO and now I'm a widow. So that brings a whole new dynamic to me in leadership and uh, trying to identify that has been, and thankfully I have a, a, a 
leadership team of men that I, I do know actually love me. <laughs> yeah. And so we've been figuring it out together as we go. But the truth is, I know that women in leadership is so vital and powerful and important and needed. And so I am so excited to have you guys sitting here at this table. Um, and I'm just going to pose this question to you. What is one thing that you believe women bring to a leadership team that men do not? <laughs> yeah, because we are different. Again, maybe not politically correct, but accurate. And I personally believe we should embrace our differences. We are not less than, right? We are equal to, but we are different. We are not the same. We are very different. And so uh, men bring something different to leadership than women do. But if you were to, could you identify one thing that you think women bring that are that, to leadership uh, that is different than men do? More compassion, I think. Mm-hmm. Compassion. Start off. I think More. that I think it really um, differs with the person. Actually, mm-hmm. you know, really? I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do. I don't. I don't believe that. Um, that. I believe that women do bring something different, but I believe each woman, each woman can bring something different because not everybody has the same intent for you, you know. And so, as long as the person's intent is pure, whatever they bring is 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 amazing, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but you know, there's there's just I think that just needs to be understood. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Monica? Uh, you know, I think it's patience. Mm. Oh. You know, um, if everyone's journey is different, but I know for women, if you really get to that leadership role, you had some patience to get there Mm -hmm. because it doesn't come overnight. No, no. Um, And definitely a whole lot of grit. Mm -hmm. So that is really different. Whereas I think sometimes, you know, as men, they get handed certain things because people trust them more. Mm -hmm. And so with us, we kind of like it's proving yourself Mm -hmm. over and over Mm -hmm. and over again. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah. There's Patience. Little, that's a yeah. great way to look at it. And it's really good. I agree with that. And obviously, we're not male bashing here at all. No. <laughs> no, uh, you know, because we all, you know, it's it's not that. It's it's just like being honest. Yeah. Speaking truth. Yeah. Right? Don't, uh, it's not bashing. All we're trying to do is continue to empower women. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because yes. you know what's funny? Hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember now that we're sitting here, who said it to me? But after Dave passed, mm-hmm. God, who was it? I forget. They Well, they said... They're going to try to take over and leave Melina behind. I said, no, they're not. And I named the ones that will come, like you said. Mm-hmm. And over time, notice exactly what I said is going to happen. Mm-hmm. The Frank, the Oscar, mm-hmm. the Tim. Mm-hmm. They, they're not going to let anybody misuse you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they're not trying to take over, take over you. No, They're letting you do what you do best, yeah. and then they're coming alongside of you. They really are. And that's where you can see true friendship step mm-hmm. up because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's what, I like I said, I've in my life been looking for, like somebody that doesn't try to take over. Like right. I don't need you to try to step mm-hmm. in and take over. I need you to just, you know, hold me when when stuff gets bad or stuff sure. gets rough, you know what I'm saying, and pull me through, and then I'll take you through with me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Let, let's do this together. Yeah. Like I said yeah. earlier, that those are associates that try to yeah. do what you don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> What 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 do you think? Um, I think emotions. Mm -hmm. I think women bring that, or at least for me, that's what I Mm -hmm. usually tend to connect with people. You know, emotions and Mm -hmm. um, just being very aware of my emotions and being able to connect with others that way. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of men. Like to show their emotions. Right. And well, they've been trained early on not to. Yeah. yeah. And for me, that's a strength that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I usually get very emotional. I start crying, whatever. And as I got older, I started to understand that's one of my strengths. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, yeah. And growing up, I feel like that was seen as weakness. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I started to hone that mm. and really take charge of that and be like, no, that's not a weakness. No, you know? no. I don't care if you see me crying. I don't care right. what you think. You know, this is me showing emotions and showing that I do care. Yeah. And you, know? you feel deeply. Right. Yeah. Being yep. real. Being real. Mm-hmm. Transparent. Earlier. Mm. 
Yeah, because we are taught too, right? If we show that kind of emotion, we are weak and we're babies, yeah. <laughs> right? And it's, and it's funny because my mom, you know, for her to, like, she doesn't cry in front of me. Mm. Like, I think it's been maybe two, three times that I've seen her cry. Wow. And Your growing up. School. Yeah, she's old school, but she's she's still very sensitive in her own way, you know? Mm-hmm. But to grow up and then for me to be like this huge crybaby, um, it was, <laughs> you know, it was hard because yeah. it was just Nine hard. <laughs> yeah, it was just hard because, you know, it, they see she it as a She didn't know what to do with she didn't, it. She probably didn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this girl? She keeps on crying all the time. Yeah, even just in school when they would tell me like my grades or, you know, do those like teacher parent teacher conferences uh-huh. like and it was it wasn't anything negative or anything I would just start crying from nowhere and I didn't understand it either mm-hmm. and it wasn't until you know getting older and um just being able to express it and you know just really explain what I was feeling yeah and being okay with being it. okay with it and just being honest mm-hmm. with that mm-hmm. that's great what about you Becky what do you think well, I mean I my first thought was patience also really Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, women in business um, can be definitely more patient for sure. Uh, I think women are, you know, I mean, I, I do believe that that's true. I think that's really insightful actually, you know, cause um, like if you think about it, being patient helps you to stay in and, oh, and to definitely. stay in the process. Definitely. You know, women are more, uh, not not all women, you know, I'm speaking in general, but I think in general we are much more tied to the process um, versus the outcome. And men are made and created to conquer, right, to protect, to, uh, you know, take care of their families. That's really, that is that is their job. And so we live in a world now where that doesn't go away, that mm-hmm. that's still how they were created. It doesn't go away. But we live in a world now where there is a role for women and men, both in leadership. And truly, I think it's always been there. Because if you think about it, when you when you run a family, it takes you know it takes two right two very different personalities that um, that are needed. You know, the idea is you usually you have one that is more justice and one that is more mercy, and then in between you find the perfect balance. You know. So, um, Tina, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with everybody on the patience mm-hmm. and, you know, emotions. Mm-hmm. And sometimes women just bring, like, to see the bigger picture sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, like, sometimes they're just, they don't know how to get there. But sometimes, you know, you just kind of have to guide at the same time, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm going to do this, you know, from a year from now. But, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes women see, okay, but this is going on, this is going on. <laughs> sometimes it can take a little longer, you know. <laughs> 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 for me and Manuel, that he's just like, okay, I'm there. And I'm yeah. like, okay, but we have this, this, this. Oh, and, you know, like, we'll get there, you know. Interesting. like, Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really, how about that? That's insightful as well. Mm-hmm. So here's my next question then, and I'm just thinking of them, obviously, as we go. Uh, I, I guess I'd like to hear from each one of you. What is one thing that you would like to, if you can think of something that you would like to uh to share with the club, what's one thing? Like if you were, uh, let's just say that I'm giving you a, a blank sheet of paper and a pen and let's just say a blank checkbook. Okay, like and not blank, you know, a blank check and you can write the check for whatever you want and you could do something for the club and it's something that you would give to the club. So you have all the resources that you want. If you could just write a check and have something done, um, what would it be? <laughs> That's such a crazy question, right? <laughs> See, I think for me, you're kind of throwing me off with the whole check thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because mm-hmm. if, and I think this is different between men and women. Uh-huh. Um, when I think about what I could give, it autom- automatically goes to sharing. And it's like sharing my journey. Mm-hmm. And that wouldn't cost you anything. I'd literally just have to get up and share that and it's interesting because this last kind of like year that's what I've been doing more and at the same time I feel like I've been elevating people more and empowering them more so it's not about money yes I do you do (laughs) yes (laughs) does it feel like that's what you should be doing yes (laughs) (laughs) is that right Uh, okay (laughs) all right I I mean I'm obviously well I'm gonna step in and say I'm gonna take the check (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but 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 go ahead, but tell me. Because I because I actually would like to, you know, make sure that the I would write it to make sure that the club um could be around for a long time. Oh. That that actually is important to me. Like I you know, something that has put me in a position in my life to not only, you know, grow, but realize certain things and um that we were talking about this earlier, um, you know, of course, off air, but um, that I don't think if I would have gotten like a deal or whatever already that I would still be here. Mm. And um, I know, you know, that sometimes I don't, I don't see, I don't, I definitely don't see my, my path and what's meant for me, but I know that my heart is in the right place. And I know that I want to be around people that, that, that fulfill me in ways that I that I've never felt before. So I would like to make sure that whatever I can do would be able to get back to, you know, to just this environment and you know, make sure that that this club is always good, that we can always be around each other, <laughs> that cuz that's important to me. Oh, I so so get that. I yeah. so appreciate that. And you don't have to use the check, but I really, I love it. It's like amazing. It's such a beautiful thing. What about you, Tina? Um, don't give up. Mm-hmm. You know, like my and Emmanuel's journey hasn't been easy. Mm-hmm. I just realized in December, we're going to be here for five years. Wow. Wow. So awesome. You know, and it hasn't been easy, but yeah. the thing is don't give up. Like mm-hmm. my, my and Emmanuel, our parenting, our marriage, our relationship has grown so much, mainly this last like year and a half, you know, mm-hmm. but... Don't give up, you know, because there's no way coming in almost five years ago that I would even think we would be in the place we are now. Mm -hmm. You know, like just hearing like my aunt calling me and my mom, like, you know, you could see you and Manny are like in a whole different place right now. Really? And my mom always thought, well, my mom's met you. So she goes, I know it's the part of the club, Uh you know, and just seeing and even my kids as well. You know, because we're talking about he's all my my old my youngest son Andrew. He's all, it's gonna be five years, mom. And I was all like, oh yeah. He's all like, you guys are different. That he, he's all like in a good in a good way. But <laughs> 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 and then just you know just little things. You know, we've changed since mm-hmm. when we first came into the club to now. You know. Yeah. And being part of the serving team and surrounding yourself, like, that's a big difference, too, surrounding yourself with people mm-hmm. that, you know, help you grow as well. Mm-hmm. So, very, very true. yeah, don't give up. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's okay. funny because <laughs> we had the same conversation about our kids. You did? They, they say the same exact thing. just To you and Eric. Yeah, yeah. Like you're... I mean, we're just, we're different with each other. Since being in the club, in a better I mean, way. oh yeah, yeah. I mean, our youngest son has ha- gone through some difficult times, mm-hmm. but you know he had to go through some therapy. And first thing they do is bring up, well, how are your parents? Mm-hmm. And from that, he's always said, I have the best parents. Mm-hmm. They treat each other well. They treat us well. I mean, that broke my heart because you know he he was struggling Mm -hmm. but he still he never had a negative thing to say about us it's wonderful but yeah i mean it's it's the same thing they you know my parents Mm -hmm. you're just different now than you were two years ago i mean a year ago wow so it's like to me i don't know the club has done so much for us but for me especially in the last year i don't know what i could ever give back Mm -hmm. How about you, Miss Adrian? I took off of what both Tamara. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just forgot her name. Tina. <laughs> I know. I just went blank. <laughs> I just went blank. <laughs> Joan. Joan. You could just call her Joan. Yeah. No, I just went blank. I'm sorry. I know your name. No. What <laughs> Tina said, but I think the one thing I could give to the club is to tell everybody, as long as you stay in, and if you're struggling, mainly if you're struggling with wanting to be alive, the club will let you see that you're, you're, you as a person are worth being here, being alive. The club will give you that. I think that's the money 
no money can buy that for you. Mm-hmm. If you just stick in with the club and believe in God, truly believe in God. Don't just say you believe in him. But I mean, you can struggle with, because, you know, there's a lot of times I didn't like God mm-hmm. over these last five years. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. You I, mean like a real relationship? A real mm-hmm. relationship, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's sometimes now still, I feel like I have a great relationship with him now. You know, I love him now, mm-hmm. but some days I don't like him. Mm-hmm. Totally. But if you just stay in, you're going to love yourself mm-hmm. and you're going to love life. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you didn't cry here <laughs> No, I was, I was getting teared up, I but no. it's okay. Um, for me, it would be building honest and true relationships and being yourself, Mm -hmm. being true to yourself. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're doing that, you know, that's going to help build those honest relationships because you're being honest with yourself Mm -hmm. and people can see that. For sure. So people know that's the truth. That's the key to success, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's truly the key to success is just being honest and being your authentic self, your Mm -hmm. most best self. Well, I'd like to tell you what I'd like to see. Are you ready? I'm going to make a challenge to you. Well, here's my question. I mean, I would like to see each one of you really take ownership of your leadership in the club. Not that you haven't. Not that you haven't. You really have. But um, who? you really have. Why are you looking at me like that? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm waiting to see what the challenge is. The challenge is for you to get on stage. (laughs) I was about t- uh, two, you, you two weeks were, ago, you remember? Were, yeah, you, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you shut me up. You were taking that doesn't tech. happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, she actually made me quiet, which is just weird. Like, she left me speechless, which generally doesn't happen. I usually have something yeah. to say. Yeah, because I fell on the, I almost fell down. I sat instead. Um, so I, I would, I would really, I, I'm very grateful for each one of you. Uh, and I, I would really like to hear uh, from you, and we'll probably, well, we will definitely be doing this offline. Like, I'd like to hear uh, what, like, what is the one thing, and maybe this is a, this is another podcast, but, and this is the question I'd like to ask you. Like, what's the one thing that you are the most afraid to do? Like, the one thing that you're the most afraid to do, and I'm just going to leave that as a cliffhanger, <laughs> because uh, we're going to talk about it, and then we're going to see how we can, what we should do with that. Does that sound like fun? Yeah. Doesn't that sound like fun? I think because we were talking about this earlier that uh, being afraid of it and mm-hmm. not and and not really because um, what we, we were saying the routine and you because because I'm afraid I don't think I'm afraid of certain things it's, it, it's there's some stuff that I don't want to do like I you know there's some yeah. things in myself then does that mean that I'm afraid of it or does it mean that I just don't want to do it you, you mean know, like, comfortable be, yeah being yeah, comfortable being comfortable with something yeah. and, no I don't you know, think just yeah cause I, I don't think want to be like I'm not a I don't want to be on stage like that's not my I don't feel yeah. that's my journey and then that's my you, path. you shouldn't so but I don't know if that's me just not oh. being comfortable with it or Got if it. that's me just you know like I don't I don't know which Got one it. it is so it's just well we know, can explore yeah, that let's, let's, because <laughs> we should explore it because for me just so you know it was the one thing the one thing I despised okay I hated it hated it hated every single second of being on stage every single time that they would want me they would want me to go up there I just wanted to puke wanted to puke and, and I would like, yeah I, I did too so we should talk through that okay. because it's generally you know people when I tell people oh I get nervous every time I go on stage nobody ever believes that they're like stop it no really I really do it. well it's not it's not natural it's not it's not, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so the, the one thing is probably that you're the most afraid of is probably the very thing that you need to do to break through something else yeah. It's almost a guarantee. So I'd like to explore that with you guys, each of you individually. I know st- the stage is always one of the things people are afraid of, but I think we should explore that and then see what we can do to work to work through it. Yeah? Is everybody in agreement? Yeah. It doesn't have to be stage. It doesn't have to be the stage. <laughs> I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not afraid to be on the stage. Right. I just don't want to be. Yeah, and that's fine. That's very And that's not being, to me, and yeah, to me, that's not being afraid. No, it's not. That's just, one of, just like, I don't want to be on the serving team. I'm not afraid to be on the serving team, <laughs> but I'm not going to be on the serving because, you know, to me, if I'm being true to myself, to me, I don't want to serve somebody that in that club that I know is not genuine to you. And there's mm-hmm. people that I know in the club that are not there generally for a genuine reason. Mm-hmm. 
You mean that they're there just to take? Yes. And to make money? And I'm not going to serve them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and being on the serving team means I would have to serve them. Yeah. And I'm not, that's not Adrian. Mm. Okay. I appreciate that. I think I look at it different. I think I look at it as serving you and the bigger purpose. Mm. Because on the serving team, you're aware of those people. And I'm more Sometimes like Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're not. Well, I'm not perfect. Yeah, like, no. I'm sure there's yeah. some that fly under my radar. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like, if I can surround her, then I can protect her. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. I think what I said and what you said both yeah. make sense, yeah. And I, you know, you could be our undercover, <laughs> you know, person. I mean. Well, not anymore because they're already saying it, so. <laughs> yeah, I never really know. Everybody's going to know yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're going right. to dodge Monica. I'll yeah. report it. Uh, this is yeah. exactly the thing that women can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that exactly what you're talking about right now, Monica? 100%. And I'm grateful. I, I actually know that each one of you um, protect the integrity of the club in your own very individual ways. I know that you do. And um, so I'm grateful for that. That's why you're sitting here at this table with me. So, um, yeah, let's explore. I think what we'll do next is next time we come around, well, actually, we're going to start a group me right now. So who's going to be the owner of it? One of y'all is. And we're going to talk. It's going to be ladies of NWAC. And uh, we're going to talk about some challenges with each other and uh, I would just say this to the listeners stay tuned to see what we're going to do next so um, here, do you know how, I, how we sign out do you know what we say we sign out mm-hmm. we are we are the ladies of NWAC and we are flipping off uh-huh. <laughs> I'm Alina Boswell your host of the flipping off podcast I really hope you enjoyed it if you did we'd love for you to subscribe Give us a five-star rating and tell your friends all about us. You can find more episodes of the Flippin' Off podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever else you like to listen to awesome podcasts like this. If you like what you've heard, we'd really appreciate it if you'd follow us on Facebook and Instagram and tell us the stories that you'd like to hear. Tim Jackson is our senior producer. Luke Jackson is our editor. Brothers. Josh Maldin is our producer. Sound design by Frequency Factory. Our executive producer is Mind and Mill. This was all created by Dave Boswell for New Wealth Advisors Club.